anything can be improved. If you can already color something that looks like this, I can show you how to make it look like this with my eight simple colored pencil tricks. Work with faint outlines. Make sure that your character is sketched lightly and that you are happy with it. Do not move on to coloring until the drawing is 100% complete. If you're comfortable drawing, make this first layer with a hard graphite pencil, keeping your lines as faint as possible. If you're a colorist, pick a page in a book or a printout that is line work only, no grayscale. And pick something with lines that are not too thick. If you're a member of my private community, I put a scan of my sketch in the gift pages from Lisa folder, so you can print it out and practice my technique that way. Build an underpainting. Now that you have a character to work with, let's establish light and shadow. Many artists like to color top to bottom, left to right, going through every single color needed for each pixel of the drawing, and it works for some people. It certainly looks impressive in time lapses. But I'm not a fan of that method. It's very hard to keep track of all the colors in the overall picture. To make sure that everything remains well balanced and realistic in the end, I recommend working in complete layers, more like you're working with oil on canvas. With my white pigment, I'm going to color everything that will ultimately be lighter than my current paper color. How do I know which areas should be lighter? Easy, I'm working from a reference image. At this light and shadow stage, I'm working with two tools, white charcoal and a brown colored pencil. I'm a huge fan of white charcoal for priming my colored pencil drawings, mainly because of how friendly it is on paper, but a white pencil will work as well. Speaking of paper, go for tan on this. This is the paper that I use. The coolest thing for me about working with white charcoal over white pencils is that I can use a Q-tip to create this beautiful diffused effect. The colored pencils that I'm working with are Black Widows. And for this drawing, I'm using a combination of the Dragon set, the brand new one, and the Skin Tone sets. But regardless of what pencil brand you're working with, just pick a nice middle brown that's kind of on a um, chestnut side. What we want to create in this step is essentially a sepia coloring, with the color of the paper being the mid-tone, white being the lightest highlights, and brown the shadows. Be prepared to spend at least an hour on this part if you want smooth results in the end. The coloring process is very much like a pyramid. The base is the most important, but it takes the longest amount of time. Add color systematically. This looks great. Pause here and assess what you have so far. It should look like a complete and attractive sepia underpainting. This took me exactly two hours to make, and I work fast. It's perfectly okay to spend a whole day on this. And it may be tempting at this stage to just leave it because it is really attractive, but keep in mind that it's still quite flat. Let's compare it to the final result. It has a ways to go in terms of color and contrast. Press on. Picking which colors to go with next is entirely up to you. Me, I mentally divided this piece into a warm half and a cool half, and I'm going to build up my warm colors first. I'm working with one color at a time, applying that color everywhere that needs it before moving on to the next one. I know that picking colors in the order of their application can seem daunting, especially when you don't have a reference image to work from. That is why I created my color theory course. If you find yourself stressing over which colors to pick next, how to balance your colors, how to make them pop, or generally how to make your colored pencil work more interesting, come join my color theory course. Depending on when you're watching this video, you can either sign up for a live version of color theory, it runs for a month with four lessons with me, or a pre-recorded seminar that you can follow at your own pace. Just follow the link wherever it is on the page and see what your options are today. Back to our coloring. I'm now about half an hour into shading with my warm colors and two and a half hours from the start of the whole thing. I've added some peachy skin tones and a lot of yellow from that light source that's facing her. 
and I'm building up my warm brown tones. This is the part that we're in is kind of the middle section of the pyramid, which can be divided into as many layers as you need, depending on the type of a colorist that you are. But the main things to pay attention to here are, one, the consistency of your pencil strokes. Make sure that whatever your shading style is, you stick to it. Don't try to speed things up by using broader strokes. Two, the pressure with which you color. I recommend working lightly, barely touching the page to create the softest gradient transitions. When you need to make a certain area darker, never do it by applying more pressure, but rather by applying more layers. So that leads us to three, layering. My method of coloring is all about layers. Layering is the secret to beautiful color transitions and realistic colors. A common question that I get is, why layer at all? Why not just pick the perfect final color and work with that? With layers, you can control your gradient transitions better. With layers, you can build up a color that has undertones that make it richer and more realistic. And darker colors are more difficult to apply to naked paper in a smooth manner that matches the rest of your coloring. A single layer of a dark pigment may appear kind of patchy and then you'll try to compensate for it by grinding more pigment into your page, which will flatten the tooth of your paper, making it really unattractive and impossible to ever add anything else to it. Just don't do it. Get in the habit of building up your colors. Introduce atmospheric perspective. Now I'm about three and a half hours into my coloring and I'm working on the cool side of my composition. Here, I want to introduce some atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective is a visual effect where objects in the distance appear kind of hazy. It's best seen in compositions that span further distances, like mountains on the horizon seeming pale and purple, even though up close they would be bright green. Here, there isn't much distance, but there could be a little bit of a depth of field. Her hair is further back in this three-dimensional space than her arms and face, and to make it look more like an action shot, I'm going to make her hair appear a little bit out of focus and a little bit in this blue haze. And that will also bring more attention to her face. Using atmospheric perspective in your art is a very strong tool to help things look more realistic and to help guide your viewers' attention to the most important parts of the composition. We tend to look at things that are more in focus. It may not always be possible to add this to coloring pages, but if you're working with a drawing, try to find a way to introduce atmospheric perspective. The key to creating that diffused off in a distance look is to blur your outlines and to dull your colors. Notice that I'm just freely coloring over everything that's her hair mess in the back there with my background blue pencil. We want that blue to spill into her hair and we definitely want blurry hair strands back there. Don't overwork the facial features. I'm now nearly four hours into my coloring and I'm starting to introduce reddish colors to the eyes and the lips. Eyes and lips are the most defining elements of the face and it's often tempting to start with them, perfect them, and then move on to the next step. Notice that I'm not doing that here. I've been building up my eyes and lips in this drawing from the very start with all the same colors as the rest of the composition. I like to approach my drawing and coloring more like sculpting. I build up my three-dimensional shapes in brown tones and then give them detail with color and contrast. Pay special attention to the lips. My advice is to color them along with everything else in the same skin tone with the same light and dark shadow rules as the rest of the face and only then start adding pink and reddish tones or whatever tones your character needs. Create a sfumato effect. Another excellent practice for realistic coloring is utilizing the sfumato effect. Sfumato is kind of similar to atmospheric perspective, but on a smaller scale and all over. The word sfumato is derived from Italian fumo, meaning smoke. And you probably already know it from Leonardo da Vinci's paintings. Looking at Mona Lisa's face, you don't see a single outline. Everything is kind of, well, smoky. This effect is attractive to the human eye because it mimics the way we actually see the world. Most of what we see is never in perfect focus. So make sure to keep your color transitions soft and smooth. 
Note that this effect is easier to achieve if you have very faint outlines. That's why in the beginning of the lesson, I recommended that you either make your own sketch, use my sketch, or find a coloring page with thin lines. If you're working with a drawing that has thick outlines, you can still add this Fumato effect to your shading, but the thick lines will make it less believable. Don't be afraid to go dark. In my classes, I talk a lot about the importance of contrast in art. Don't be afraid to go dark. Continue building up those layers of color and make sure to go through every single brown or blue or whatever your dark colors are on the way to black or near black. In my drawing, I want her hair to be dark brown. I am four and a half hours into my coloring and only now I have my dark brown layers where I want them. Let's take a closer look at the, at the eyebrows, for instance. See how layering colors helped create that sfumato effect? This is a much more attractive look than just drawing dark brown eyebrows with a single brown pencil onto pale skin. It all falls together now, doesn't it? The layering, the color buildup, the soft shading, they all work together to create this beautiful, realistic look. Take your time with this. It's all about patience. I usually add a little bit of black pencil work just to a few areas like the pupils, the eyelashes, and in case of this drawing, to the darkest parts of her hair and a few elements on her armor. Notice that no part of my drawing actually appears pure black. I talk about the use of color shades in my courses on drawing and coloring as well. You may be interested in taking my Udemy course on skin tones. Add final details. It's been five hours since I started coloring this, and it's time to wrap it all up. At this final stage, I like to review everything and step back and appreciate the work as a whole. No, seriously, literally, stand up, step back from your workspace, and make sure that you can assess the work from the distance. Even if you're five feet away, it needs to look beautiful, smooth, and realistic. If something feels off, now is the time to tweak it. This is the very top of our pyramid, and it should take just a few minutes or maybe even a few seconds. I'm really happy with my coloring, but I want to add one final detail. For the cherry on top, I'm adding a few of these spark effects. Not too many, just a handful, and not in perfect focus. Now it looks more like a photographic effect. Let's take off the border tape and see how it all looks. I like it. I'm gonna call it done. So let's recap. Make sure that your sketch or drawing lines are thin and faint. Invest in a sepia-toned underpainting before moving on to color. Add color in layers. If possible, add atmospheric perspective. Don't overwork facial features. Treat them as reliefs on a three-dimensional surface, adding color and detail at the very end. Make your color transition soft, creating a sfumato effect. Don't be afraid to go dark. Always assess your work in the end to see what tiny details can bring it all together. Sometimes it's as simple as cleaning up your lightest highlights and darkest shadows. I hope you enjoyed this coloring of Gal Gadot. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what other characters and effects you would like to learn. Don't forget that you can download my sketch of this drawing in Tom, my free private community. Go and grab it and give this coloring and shading method a shot. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.